Hi everybody and welcome to today's video. This is a video you have to watch if you're interested in stamp duty in UK property because we've won a case and it's an important case. Now the leading case on this issue and it deals with multiple dwellings relief and apportionment. So let's get into it. Why is this case important? Well, the Marcus and Marcus case, links in the description below to, to the case and to our commentary on it, dealt with the issue of whether or not a property A was residential and B, if it was, whether or not it could claim multiple dwellings relief. And the key takeaway from this case was that HMRC were trying to charge the company that had bought this property to convert into an assisted living for people with disabilities a 15% flat rate of SDLT instead of the normal residential rate plus 3%. So Marcus and Marcus had bought this property which was formerly in use as a commercial nursery so you would argue it was actually mixed use and intended to convert it into this care home which itself would have been mixed use. They paid residential SDLT. They probably shouldn't have done, but that's what they did. HMRC came along and decided that A, not only was it residential, but because it had been converted, that they couldn't claim any of the reliefs. Now, all this happened before we got involved. We were called in to handle the inquiry and indeed ultimately were it to go to court, handle the case. We pretty quickly identified that the property was in fact multiple dwellings. There, instead of there being just a main house, there was a main house, a freestanding office and two further dwellings in the gardens. And we had a meeting with the revenue. We agreed that multiple dwellings was applicable but the issue there would have been, were that the case, that in fact, not only was the revenue assessment wrong, but in actual fact, Marcus and Marcus had overpaid the tax by £20,000. Now, at the time we had the meeting, the revenue officers hadn't got their calculators with them, so it wasn't until they got back to the office realised that they'd actually have to send my client a refund instead of demanding a swingingly huge cheque for £87,000, that they uh, suddenly tried to reverse out of the decision and they decided that the main house was worth more than half a million and because it was owned in a corporate vehicle, it was excluded from the multiple dwellings calculation, thus allowing them to stand pretty much on their original assessment. We disagreed and there is a basis for apportioning values called the just and reasonable basis. And we proposed using floor area as a means to apportion the value, i.e. total area of the land, floor area of main house, floor area of the two additional dwellings. Unfortunately, for the revenue, that led to the repayment. They, of course, didn't want to give us that, so they managed to uh, instruct the valuations office agency and they used the wrong basis in our view so we pointed this out to them so they instructed the valuations office again and misinstructed them again they claim by accident and so were able able to say that they didn't agree with the calculation over the course of nearly four years it took to bring this matter to court, we tried to solve the matter by negotiation, but the revenue were being frankly intransigent. The matter eventually went before a tribunal where this issue of what was just and reasonable was debated before a judge. Happily, the judge agreed that Cornerstone's version was just and reasonable and handed down a decision which is now the leading case in this area as to how you should apportion, which not only gave victory to Marcus and Marcus, but also handed them that critical £20,000 refund that we'd been saying that they were entitled to for over four years. Why is this important to you? Because very often you will have to deal with apportionments, particularly in areas where corporates acquire residential property and multiple dwellings is involved. And if you have a problem like this, it's worth reading the 
case, if you've got the patience, read the case in detail or certainly read our blog on the subject because this case was a win for the taxpayer, gave him a refund that he didn't even realise he was entitled to and the parallels between this and earlier mixed use cases is fascinating because similarly judges handed taxpayers refunds and it's an important line in the sand as to how we as tax professionals and you as buyers of property need to consider your tax affairs when, when considering these issues. If you think you've got a problem like that or you've got an issue like that, of course we'd be more than happy to help you at Cornerstone. But you might want to bring this video in this case to the attention of your conveyancer or your tax advisor because they may well be unaware of it. It was never published in the mainstream press. Uh, unlike uh, taxpayer defeats, which are all too frequently used to make headlines. Weirdly, taxpayer wins aren't. And uh, they might need to be aware of this. There's a separate case, which I'm going to talk about in another video, a Scottish case called Sloss, which completely contradicts English court's decisions on what is and isn't mixed use. And we'll be shooting that video shortly. And uh, if you click like and subscribe, You'll get updates and notifications when we post that video. And you may find that industry interesting if you're buying property with additional land because it's directly relevant to that issue. I've been David Hanna for Cornerstone Tax. Thank you for listening.